my name is Sarah and I am part of an amazing team that is trying to tackle one of the biggest problems of our future, which is transportation. Our team is building one of the possible designs of the Hyperloop pod. The Hyperloop was introduced by Elon Musk in 2013. So a Hyperloop pod is a pod that rushes through a low pressure tube and it levitates. So it does not get slowed down by air nor ground and it can reach speeds of up to 1,200 kilometers per hour, which is almost the speed of sound. And best of all, it does not emit any carbon dioxide, so it is totally sustainable. So why do you need a Hyperloop? Well, one of the main goals of the Hyperloop is to connect cities over long distances. So just imagine your friend in Berlin now calling you and asks you to have a coffee together. Usually, the trip from Munich to Berlin would take over six hours, so it's not easy to just simply stop by. But with a Hyperloop, this would be possible because it would only take half an hour. Does this not sound amazing? And that is exactly what our team is trying to accomplish. I know it sounds um, crazy to do, but let me tell you how everything started. So last year, SpaceX announced the student competition to build a Hyperloop pod. When the student organization at my university heard of this, they got super excited. They usually build rockets and satellites. Here's a picture of one of the rockets that they actually have launched. And when they heard the name SpaceX, an ultimate new challenge to solve, they were thrilled. And so the team started off with seven people, which quickly grew to 18 people that came up with the design and concept of our Hyperloop pod that they showed in Texas earlier this year and got us through the semifinals. After coming back from Texas, this team grew to 36 people. And this team got us today at uh, where we are standing today. We have finished building a Hyperloop pod and it works. So now we are waiting for the competition to begin and compete against the other great universities and show off what our Hyperloop pod can do. Now you've seen, we're just a bunch of students who are doing this next to our studies. We are self-organized, we are multicultural, international and multidisciplinary, but we do not have long years of engineering experience and we didn't even have any money in the beginning. However, we did something that no other large traditional company has done so far. I mean, these large companies have all the resources in the world, but they didn't build a Hyperloop. And we're just students. So how did we do this? Well, the simple um, answer to this question is because we are an amazing team and we have also great leadership. So being part of this amazing team, I want to share with you some insights that I have learned on leadership and how to lead a self-organized team tonight. So there are two aspects that I want to talk about. First, it's motivation. And second of all, it's communication. So the key role of a great leader is to always keep the motivation high <laughs> in a team. And um, I mean, like the people who joined the project, they were already driven and motivated but you always have situations where you feel uncomfortable, you don't know where you're heading to, and it's the job of the leader to always keep the vision alive. Because radical change always implies chaos, and it's never a linear process. And if it is, you might be doing something wrong. One of the biggest problems during the process was that we had a lot of uncertainty, especially because SpaceX changed the requirements of the Hyperloop frequently during the whole project. So we had to change and adapt our Hyperloop pod all the time. One of my best examples to this was that we were working on our braking system of our Hyperloop, and it took us two months and four people working on it. And just in the moment when we finished and wanted to build the braking system, we got an email from SpaceX telling us that we cannot use it. So in the next two weeks, we had to come up with a total new concept of the braking system. Well, you can imagine how frustrating this becomes. So in this case, it is important for the leader to always show the bigger picture and not let the team members get irritated and carried away by all the obstacles on the way, because you will always have these obstacles.
And it's sometimes the trick of a leader to turn a problem to an opportunity. And this is exactly what we have done. We kept our original concept of the braking system next to our new one. So now we have two brakes, one for the higher speeds and one for the lower speeds. And this even makes our pod safer and it also has redundancy. So now I have been talking about motivation and now I want to come to the second point, it's communication. So just imagine we have a bunch of motivated people to work on a big problem together, but they do not talk to each other. So all the potential is lost. Communication is the key to solve a problem together with a great team. And this is the job and the responsibility of the leader to have this communication within a great team. Especially in our case, because we are super diverse, we have 15 different nationalities and over six different study backgrounds within one single team. And this diversity is needed to solve huge problems that we're trying to solve, but this also implies complexity. And in this case, it is important for the leader to unify the people. It is important to have the same vision within the team. I mean, we built a Hyperloop pod within a year. No, I mean less than a year. Isn't that amazing? And this is only possible if the team works together on the same goal, is driven by the same thing, and also acts quickly. And by quick action, I mean that our decision-making process is simple. We do not have 10 levels of management to get approval to do something. We're just one team, and people can just pitch their ideas, and together with a team, you can decide to do it or not to do it. And in that moment, when a person comes up and pitches their idea, it is important to always communicate with respect and trust. It is important to allow the people to be themselves and respect their ideas. This allows the people to also take their own initiative because they feel comfortable to also go on their crazy um, ideas. And like this, wonders can happen even though you have no salary or money to give your people. Because money is not everything. One of my best examples of this is when we were trying to work on the exterior design of our Hyperloop pod, a professional design company came to us and offered us support to come up with a design for our exterior. And we said, yes, we, of course you can help us. We always like support. And with, after two weeks, they um, showed us their design. And when my colleague Matthew saw it, he was quite disappointed. So he took out paper and a pencil and just started sketching. And I asked him, what are you doing? And he said, well, I'm gonna come up with a much better design. I'm like, okay, sure, you can do that. <laughs> and he sketched and erased, sketched and erased. He was sitting in the back of the corner of the room and he was working all night long. And the next morning when I woke up, I received a message from Matthew. It's him in a picture and showing off his finished design. And it was amazing. Uh, we definitely took it and we had to tell the professional design company that we will no longer use their design anymore because one of our team members did it overnight. Um, <laughs> and which was more amazing, but we didn't tell that. But this initiative of Matthew exactly embodies the culture of our team because we believe in that people can go crazy to push the project further and go the extra mile. Now, this year was crazy and I have learned so many things on leadership and how to lead a, a self-organized team. Now tonight, I want to give you five insights on what I, as one of the leaders of this amazing project, have learned. So first, always give your team a vision for them to follow. It is important for people to have a goal in sight that they remain motivated. Second, as a leader, you must stand in the front line. Take the responsibilities to solve one of the stupid obstacles on the way, especially the management problems, so that the people can actually focus on the real work. And always be approachable and stay confident, especially in difficult times. Third, give constructive feedback. 
always remember that we are humans and we do mistakes and leave them space to also grow and learn. As a leader, you must guide the people and not try to punish them. This is very important. Fourth, never settle for less if you know that you can achieve much more. Always remember, all in or go home. Last but not least, always trust your team. So, if the people have no limitations to be creative and have clear responsibilities on what they're doing, work becomes fun and this sparks motivation. And if you have motivation and a clear goal to follow, you can achieve anything. And in this project, building a Hyperloop pod from scratch in less than a year, it showed me that anything is possible and it is totally motivational to build something new that no one has done before. So this team is very proud to be part of one of the first Hyperloop rides and pushing this new sustainable technology forward for our next generations. I mean, the Hyperloop will change how we live today. Distances will no longer be an issue. It will not matter anymore where you live, where your family is, where your friends are, where you go to work. The Hyperloop will be able to get the people closer together. So if there is something that I have learned in this chaotic year is that you don't need to be a large corporation nor superhero to make a difference. You can do this because people love challenges, especially if it is about replacing our old system and making something new. You just have to figure out how to give them a vision and how to motivate them to do so. And this is quite easy if you have a great vision like the Hyperloop. And just imagine a future where we can solve one of our biggest problems in the world exactly in the same way, getting people together from various backgrounds to make the world a better place. And this is something that I am very much looking forward to. Thank you very much.